On November 30th, 2019, James Harden had one of his all-time performances. In just 30 minutes of playing time, Harden scored 60 points with a true shooting percentage of 88%. 88%. To put his performance in perspective, that night Harden earned a game score of 52.4, the 10th highest game score ever achieved in NBA history. For those unfamiliar with this statistic, game score is a stat that measures a player's individual performance by factoring in virtually all metrics tracked during a game. In other words, James Harden had statistically a top 10 game in NBA history in just three quarters. If Harden had played his season average of 37 minutes that game instead of just 30, at the pace that he was going, he would have had statistically the best NBA game ever. In 1990, when Michael Jordan set the NBA record for game score of 64.6, he played 50 minutes. At the pace James Harden was going, if he played 50 minutes, he would have racked up a game score of 87.4 miles ahead of any player and any game ever played in the history of the NBA. A seemingly uneventful November matchup and here James Harden is making history. In fact, James Harden isn't just making history, he's setting the stage for the future of the league, for better or for worse. Not too long ago, 30 points was a big night, triple doubles were a rare feat. Now 40 is the new 30 and triple doubles are a dime a dozen. Throughout the course of the entire 2011-2012 NBA season, there were 8 games where a player scored 45 points or more. 8. Last season, the NBA had its fair share of 45 plus point games too. Yeah. Just 8 seasons ago, 45 points was a spectacular night. Last season, 45 point games were happening a couple times a week. In fact, we are just 6 weeks into the 2019-20 NBA season and there has already been 12 such games. But the extent of historical performances does not end with just one player. It feels like this season the NBA is at a turning point. We are seeing absurd stat lines, huge numbers, and records fall virtually every night. On average, the NBA produces about three top 100 all-time games every season. Between the 2011 and 2013 seasons, the NBA produced just three of these all-time great games. But just six weeks into this NBA season, and there have already been four all-time top 100 performances. The NBA is currently undergoing a complete shift in play style, productivity, and what it means to be great. And James Harden is leading the way. It's hard to imagine a league over 70 years old still going through such drastic changes. And yet, here we are. Nearly 2020, and the NBA is shifting now more than it has in the last few decades. Players are finding loopholes and rules. They're finding new ways to create production. Advanced metrics have teams playing in a style that isn't fun to watch, but I guess it gets the job done. So far this season, three players are averaging 30 points a game or more. Of course, this may change as the season continues, but this has only occurred one other time in the last four decades. Last season, every single team in the NBA averaged over 103 points per game. In the 2011-2012 season, just eight years ago, just three teams in the entire NBA averaged over 103 points per game. We are seeing an entirely new breed of basketball take shape in front of us. And whether you enjoy it or not, it drastically alters the context of the game itself. For example, in the 2011-2012 season, the league leader in points per game was Kevin Durant with 28. A far cry from the 40 points James Harden is currently averaging. Which just sounds weird. I mean, look at it. That just doesn't look right. It's like a typo that hasn't been fixed yet. But no, it's not a typo. It's just James Harden. Anyways, way back in 2012, the league leaders in points per game looked like this. But if we adjust these numbers to the pace of play in the current NBA, these numbers look like this. And 32.2 looks a whole lot better than 28. When you watch the games live, it's pretty obvious that the game has changed drastically. 
I mean, when a guy shoots 29% from the field, misses 16 threes, and still manages to drop a 50 bomb, you know something just ain't right. But this is the state of the NBA, and this is what we have to deal with. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Some NBA fans enjoy a more methodical, slower game with elite ball movement and suffocating defense. And some NBA fans prefer a faster pace, no energy for defense because we spent it all on offense, let's see who can break an NBA record first, game style. To each their own. But of all the big changes we have seen take place in this young NBA season, there have been some incredible developments taking shape as well. One of those changes being the young superstar that is Luka Doncic. And yes, he's not a star, he is a superstar. At just 20 years old, in his second NBA season, Luka is averaging a near 30-point triple-double while leading the Dallas Mavericks to the second best record in the West. The Dallas Mavericks, a team that finished with the second worst record in the entire conference last season, is now a power player in the West. And let's be honest, if you take Luka off of this Dallas squad, you are looking at arguably one of the worst teams in the entire league. The kid is absolutely phenomenal, and he is using this new age basketball to his advantage by emphasizing his exceptional abilities while masking his weaknesses. He is an absolute juggernaut on the offensive end, and although he isn't nearly the best defensive player on the court, fortunately that part of the game has become almost non-existent. All you need to do is outperform your opponent on the offensive end, which Luka has proven to be capable of all day long. Hope some of the shots don't fall, and bada bing bada bang, NBA superstar. Now I can go on for the next hour about Luka's wizard-like abilities at just 20 years old, but to give you some perspective on just how great the kid is playing, here is a list of all-time great NBA players and their best season in terms of PER. In order to crack this list, you would have to compile a season so outstanding, it ends up somewhere in the record books. Here's Westbrook's first triple-double season. Curry's revolutionizing 2015-2016 season is right here. Wilt's 62 season that set the standard for what is possible on a basketball court is right here. And here are the seasons that earned each respective player a league MVP. This list is so elite that all-time greats like Kobe Bryant, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Karl Malone, Julius Irving, Nowitzki, Duncan, Barkley, and numerous others don't even make an appearance. But you know who does? A 20-year-old Luka Doncic. And not only does Luka show up on this list of all-time high PERs, he is pushing a PER higher than any other player in the history of the NBA. The kid is 20 years old, and he is having a season more elite than any other player ever. Oh, and James Harden, I guess he's having a pretty good season himself. Well, actually, I lied. There's one player that has a higher PER than Luka. Yeah. No other player in NBA history has put up a PER higher than 32, and Giannis is averaging nearly 34. So far, this season Giannis is having, by far, the greatest season statistically of any player in the history of the league. Which leads us right into the next great development that has come from this new age of basketball. In a league where teams are shooting 43 pointers a game, where flopping is seen as a strategy to get an edge on your opponent, and half of the moves being exploited look like travels, you have a physical specimen that looks like he was taken right out of the early 2000s and transplanted into 2019. A guy that uses his length, size, and strength to outmuscle and outwill his opponents. A player that is slowly learning how to finesse his way to 30 and 15 a night, but in the meantime continues to bully the entire league because, well, he can. He's one of the few superstars left in the league who can drop 40 on your head, then come down and stuff you at the rim. And even better, not only does he have the capacity to do so, he is willing to do so. In a league that, at times, is downright hard to watch, you have the Greek Freak. The player who isn't afraid to go inside, take a beating, then come right back even stronger. 
He can't rely on a step back jumper or three point bombs because unfortunately, he doesn't have those moves in his arsenal yet, at least not at the elite level. But although his lack of diverse offensive skills appears to be a curse, it has actually become a blessing in disguise. While the rest of the league is jacking up threes, begging for calls, and trying to outpace their opponents, Giannis is grounded in a playstyle that works day after day after day without fail. While teams are living and dying by the three, there's Giannis, forcing his way inside for a hard-nosed two-pointer that he can get all week long. And we haven't even mentioned the fact that Giannis has led the Bucks to the best record in the NBA with an average supporting cast. To put the season Giannis is having so far into perspective, here are Shaq's numbers from the most dominant season of his career, his 1999-2000 MVP season. And here are Giannis's numbers so far this season. It's almost 2020. NBA teams are scoring 111 points and still losing by nearly 50. Dudes have more free throws made than field goals made. Guys are out here trying to win an Academy Award instead of just playing defense. And then there's Giannis playing like it's 1999. Luka and Giannis, although very different, both have all the qualities to transcend this era of basketball. They aren't concerned about what other people think. They want to win, they want to get better, and they just want to play ball. But we are talking about a league where a reverse aging bionic man in his 17th season is putting up big numbers. A guy with a beard in Houston is averaging 40 points a game, and a player can sit out a third of the time and still arguably be considered the best player in the world. These two young guns putting up historical, record-breaking numbers still have their work cut out for them. Let me know in the comments below. How do you feel the league has changed and has that change created a product that is even sustainable? Are Luka and Giannis truly having two of the greatest seasons in NBA history, or are the numbers not telling the full story? Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.